Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, hello there and welcome to episode three of my Hello Self podcast series for 2024. This is Hello Self podcast and I am your host, Patricia Leonard. I'm here to help you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. You know, it's time to get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf. And in the first episode of this four series podcast, we talked a little bit about the mask we wear. How do they keep us from identifying who we are and what we want? Do we fool ourselves to the point that we think that what's happening right now makes us happy or this is all there is or We wear the mask of those kind of thinkings and pretend to everybody else that we're real happy. That was basically what the first one was about, first episode. And you can go back and hear all of these on my Spotify, uh, my website, patricialeonard.net. And so anyway, it was beginning to look at the mask we wear, the mask of pretend, the mask of this is all there is, the mask of I'm not enough, the mask of I'll wait till someday and dream that or live that dream whenever. So the mask we wear get in the way of becoming who we really are. In podcast two, we began to look at the mindset. Uh, that keep us where we are. We wear these masks to fool ourselves because we have a mindset somewhere along the way that says, uh, I couldn't do that anyway. If you remember, or if you haven't heard it yet, William Barclay said there are two great days in a person's life. The day that we were born and the day that we discovered why. So our second podcast took this type of assessment process. I actually had you engage in a shoe exercise. What kind of shoe are you? And I'm I'm sure when you started out, you probably had the mindset that this is ridiculous. How could I know who I am or find what I want to do by taking some kind of a shoe assessment. You may have said you were a flip-flop, and then I would say, well, what kind of people does your flip-flop hang around with? So it's helping you get out of what we normally do when somebody asks us, what do we want to do or who are we? We go into the same old story over and over. So if you're a shoe, it's going to be a different kind of story and you can't fall into that rut or that mindset about here's the way I answer that or I'll make it up right now. No, on a shoe, when you're a shoe, you got to look at yourself from a shoe standpoint and not from the standpoint of who you are in your career or in your family life or in the environment that you live or work in. So what the shoe assessment and journey was really all about is trying to find out what what you, like Barclay said, who you are and what you want to do. So the shoe assessment was set up in what questions, what kind of shoe are you, and then why questions. Why are you that kind of shoe? Another question might be, what state would you like to live in if you could live any place? Why would you want to live in that state? If you could have any kind of career, 
What would that career be? And why would it be? Today, we're taking it to the next step because in a way, that was a visioning process. And a lot of people put vision boards together. If you've worked with a coach, they're going to sit there and ask you these kind of questions. Maybe not about a shoe, but the whole thing is, it's going, my goal is, and I hope that as you wrote down your answers to those questions, you went back later and started looking, why would I want to live there? What would I do if I could do anything? Why would I want to do that? Simon Sinek says, until we understand the why, we may never make it there because it won't have much meaning unless we start to say, this is why I want to be there. So today, our goal is is to take the first learning from the mask we wear, who are we trying to fool ourselves, <laughs> and then the mindsets that we have about ourselves and certain perceptions about what it would be to be on the other side of who we are today. Now, in episode three, that's where we are today, we're going to start looking at, based upon what you learned out of that assessment, what are the goals and dreams that came out of there for you? Did it, what, did it surface something that said, I want to live in such and such a state? I remember when I was in Columbus, Indiana, corporate human resource professional. As soon as my son graduated from college, I said, you know, it's time, Patricia, for you to graduate from something. So I sold my house and I moved. So I asked myself some questions. What do you want to do? And what kind of shoe are you? Are you a shoe that's just going to explore? Are you a shoe that's going to walk someplace and to say, this is why I came here? So I did. I left, went to Nashville, Tennessee, and then spent some time. Why did you think this was important? So I think we're always asking ourselves, what questions? What am I thinking about? What am I unhappy about? What am I happy about <laughs> and why? Because that's one of the most important questions that Simon Sinek says you need to know is know your why. So that you know when you reach a celebration point. This is why I came here. This is why I created this podcast is for you to begin to discover what you want to do, and why you want to do it. We're going to take that learning that you had from episode one about the mask you wear, and then you're learning about uh, the mindsets you have. I, I don't have the talent to do that. This is a crazy exercise anyway, another mindset. How could a shoe help me find out? You, you may have asked yourself all kinds of questions. And those are mindsets, being able to take your mask and take it off and then explore, like the shoe assessment, just begin to look at, if I can't be here or if I take this mask off, who will I be? I got to find something to be. And then your mindset surface about, no, I couldn't do that. I'll have to wait till the kids grow up. So everything starts to become more clear about how we talk to ourselves. Because after all, Hello Self is really about understanding who we are. Barclay says the first, the things that are most important is what, what was it? Let me see again. The day we were born, so beginning to understand that, and then why we were born. Those are the two things that hopefully you've been able to give yourself some clarity. And it doesn't all come at once, so you may go through this podcast with me, and then 
a month later, you're talking again, or you're out there exploring some of the possibilities that you that surface for you. That's what we're going to do today, because I want to take you closer and help you get closer to what it is you want in your life and how you might go about that. So the, this is going to be more about where you go next. And specifically, my goal is what are you going to manifest in 2024 that makes you happy? Because this is a new charter, a new time in life, and it is time for us to step up and create what we want. Not just let it stay in our imagination or on that someday shelf. So it might take you back to back some back to something you dreamed of as a child, or something that another person told you. Patricia, you'd be great at this, or John, you'd be good at this. You do it all the time. You might want to be a coach, and guess what, John? You were a soccer coach of young children for a long time. Or Susie, you might uh, want to start your own sewing business or your own designer business or start painting. So those are the things that we want to explore and get us out of our box and get us out of our mask and get us out of our mindsets so we can really find out why were we born? Because this is a legacy that you're going to leave about who you are. What do you want somebody to say when you're no longer here? I want somebody to say, Patricia Leonard, you made a difference in my life. You remember that day you told me, just go ask for the salary of 75000 And I said, oh, no, I'm just right out of school. I couldn't. And? You went ahead and asked, and you got it. So we'll we'll talk a few about a few of those kind of experiences as I share this episode three. So let's take some time to explore a few possibilities. And I hope you've got your logbook out again. What comes to you is very important. So much of the time we say, oh, no, that didn't mean anything. The intuition or the mind or the soul or the physical body or the emotions are giving us feedback all the time, but we discount it. So while we're in this episode, I'd like for you to at least what surfaces in your mind, just write it down, just write it down. And then later you can go back and look at it and put all, all your evaluations and mindsets and mask on it. <laughs> but right now, let's just open up to possibilities. So get your logbook out and jot down any possibilities that come to you. So I've got written down here on my notes, a few possibilities that might have surfaced or that you've said all your life, you want to do this. And then I'll give you a couple of stories about people that told me their stories and how it happened for them. So you might have said, I want to open up a side business. Maybe I'm working in corporate America, or maybe I'm working at a restaurant or a clothing store, or maybe you're working at another job right now. Doesn't mean you're miserable. I'm not suggesting that. I'm simply saying, what are some possibilities? And then why? Just like we did with our shoe exercise. So you might have thought about opening another business. Now, the next step would be what kind of business would that be? Or it might simply be mowing yards for extra money. I know some grown up people that have done that and they're working at a corporation and making good money. But they like to be out of doors and why not be on a, a lawnmower and seeing the out of doors? So there's a lot of things, but 
we get all caught up in our mask and our mindsets. Oh, they'll think I'm, they'll think that I don't have any money or yeah. What do you care what people think about you <laughs> until your legacy? <laughs> okay. Offer a free workshop. Everybody knows about how to do something. Might be crocheting. It might be writing a book or writing poetry or how do you are a leader? What is a real leader? And let me tell you, I want to go back that you don't have to be, quote, an expert to get out there and do something. Somebody's going to listen to your story because you know my saying, I believe in everyone's story. There are many gifts and lots of glories, but we just don't take the time to listen, to really listen, number one, to ourselves, and number two, to the mindsets we have that stop us or limit us. Okay, you might have decided to create a podcast. Oh, look what I did. I did the same thing. Let me tell you what happened. I I had been doing motivational talks and and everybody said, well, Patricia, every time we meet, you uplift me. So I started out on Facebook Live. Well, an interesting thing happened. I would just announce that I'm going to talk about how do you stay motivated? How do you create a, a business plan? How do you? So I just put some things out there. And lo and behold, it started growing. And I went, wow, people are interested in this. I had no idea. But it just started growing. So then what happened? Somebody invited me to be interviewed on a podcast. And I say, what do you have to do to get a, a podcast started? So I was given the gift from another friend about her podcast producer. And I co contacted them. And here we are today. <laughs> So you see, you just never know. I don't know what the next step of my journey is. Yes, I do. I'm going to create a documentary of my life. <laughs> but I've got something for you if you want it before then. And it's in episode four. So come back. Okay, another thing is, have you ever thought about writing a book? You know what? My grandson is now 12. When he was six years old, I said, Gavin, what about writing a book instead of getting a Christmas gift this Christmas? And he said, Mom, Pat, I'm only six years old. I can't write a book. That's for big people. I said, Gavin, don't ever tell me you can't do something, honey. You can. So I brought my computer out on the table at their house. Gavin sat on the floor, six years old started playing with building blocks of some kind. But then he looked up at me and he said, well, what do we do, Mom Pat? I said, oh, I like that. So I said, I will ask you the same three questions over about different subjects. And one of them I remember was Gavin what do you like about school? He said, Mom, Pat, I like saying pledge allegiance to the flag. Well, I said the second question. So what do you like? Why do you like that? He says, because it reminds me that I am free. Hmm, very good answer, Gavin. Okay, the third question on each subject is how do you honor that when you're living your everyday life, like when you go to Target, because that was your favorite store then. So how do you honor that? Or how do you live that? And he said, when I'm at Target with mom and dad, and I see a policeman, he said, you know, my uncle is a policeman in LA. I said, yes, I know that. He said, well, whenever I see them, I go salute. Right then, I knew that we were going to create a book. 
because he got a little excited. So then we have chapters in there, but the same three questions about how you live that every day, why you like that, and what is it? So you see, we can, if you want to write a book, don't tell me you can't. Just give me a, send me an email and we'll we'll talk about it. And that's, I'll give you my email at the end, but well, maybe I'll just tell you now. It's Patricia at PatriciaLeonard.net. So write a book or write a comedy act. I've got so many stories I could tell you, but I have this a High Heels Cabaret variety show, and we're going to talk more about it in episode four. But it's a variety show for people who just want to express themselves which is where our society is right now, dying to get out of the prison that they have put themselves in, or society has. However, I said to my friend, she's a filmmaker and a composer, and she said, I want to do something. And I said, well, what about something from your film? No, it's about to get funded, so I don't want to do anything to... I said... What about a song you you compose? He she said, "Oh my gosh, what about my Bingo Wings song?" Well, let me tell you. We started talking about Bingo Wings. They're these flabby pieces under your arms. So we started creating a comedy act. We were laughing so hard at our own creation. <laughs> you see, it can be fun. And she is going to perform in my next High Heels Cabaret variety show. She was in the process of moving when I did my first one, so she couldn't make it. But comedy, it could be something that you've already created or that you're just silly enough to do. I had one man that came to me recently and he said, I'd like, I'm a comedian, I'd like to be in your show. I said, so what are you going to do about high heels? He said, well, I'm going to write a skit about high heel shoes from a man's point of view as a comedy act. And I said, you're in. (laughs) So you see what happens if we just let go of those limiting beliefs, the mindsets we have, and take off the mask. Oh, I would look silly. I don't want anybody to see me silly. You see what I'm saying? That's why we don't do anything. Another one might be offer to speak to a group about a topic you're good at. You know, anything, anything, just anything you like. Playing checkers, (laughs) going for a walk in the woods and appreciating the leaves and the trees. I, I used to write poems about trees. I love trees. To me, they were personalities of people. And some personalities are bigger than others, and they squeeze the little ones out. Or the little ones have a mindset, oh, I could never be as big as that big oak tree. You see what I'm saying? It's all around us. Uh, Record something on Zoom and put it on YouTube. Yeah, go out there and record something on Zoom. If you've written a song, go do it. Yeah, like I did. (laughs) I wanted to write a song. They had a $15 songwriting uh, webinar, or uh, yeah, I guess it was a webinar or seminar at uh, Country Music Hall of Fame. And I said, oh, $15, I'm going to do it. So I wrote High Heel Shoes. Then I created a DVD out of it. And I sang it. (laughs) I'm not a singer, but I had a lot of fun. And it's on uh, YouTube, Patricia Leonard's uh, studio. And you can go on there and see high heel shoes. But anyway, it's and then I got some other people involved in it. A little girl that was four years old and a teenager with braces. I loved it. So it's anything is open. So let your mind flow during this, these series, these episodes of cast of Hello Self. Just let it open up and don't put 
anything you got in prison. Everything that was ever created started at the imagination. The Wright Brothers, yeah, electricity. Start a business on the side. I've already said that. But maybe now you're thinking about another idea for a business. Baking. I know a woman that started baking cookies. You've heard of her. And then she created a multi-million dollar business out of cookies. You've heard of her. If not, go look her up because then that'll help you get excited. Coach a little league team. I coached hockey. I coached soccer. <laughs> and we were winners, too, because I am a competitor. <laughs> and I had little, at the might level, I had little girls and little boys on. And I remember one incident. The guy, the little guys weren't passing to the girl. We only had one girl out on the ice at the time. So I called a time. I said, sit down on the ice. We got something to talk about. So I said, I haven't seen any of you passing to the little girl. Well, she's a girl. She couldn't hit the puck. I said, no, this is a team. So then we got back on the ice. And every time one of them got the puck, they smacked it. <laughs> Not to be mean, but to create a teamwork. And then we had to talk a little bit about that that we want everybody involved. But you see, there's all kinds of things you can do. So you're going to have this, these ideas available to you in episodes, four episodes. So you can go on and take them, learn from them, and use them as your own tools for helping others. After all, that's what it's really about, isn't it? is helping others accomplish what their dreams are. Okay, another one. Take a piano or guitar lessons on YouTube. I'm going to tell you a story about somebody that did just that, and I think they're on their way to stardom. And I'll tell you that they went on there and they taught themselves to play the guitar, sing, and they're using Instagram and Facebook to promote themselves. And they started this when they were 14 years old, I believe, or 15, something like that. Here we are now at some list of questions. It is not all the questions. You figure out what it is you want to do. You maybe want to travel uh, internationally, but you'll say to yourself, oh, I don't have the money. Let me tell you about an example. All you got to do is put it out there and believe. So I kept saying, God, you know what? I just want to go to Italy. I really want to go to Italy. And But I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it from a finance standpoint, but help me figure it out. True story. I knew a professor from a local university that I had met at one of his workshops. And I saw an ad that he put out there on Facebook. He had a timeshare in Brazil and Italy. I contacted him. You got to take action. You just can't sit around and dream. You gotta... So I contacted him and said, tell me more about what you're, you're putting this out there that you can't make this, but you're open to let somebody else use your timeshare. And I said, and I'm really interested in Italy. So to make a long story short, which is tough for me, we met and he said, Patricia, here's all you have to do. You pay my timeshare fee of $600 for one year. And I said, oh my gosh, that's great. And I got on uh, the internet and started checking out flights. I got a flight for under a thousand dollars. Of course, I'm old as hills, and that's why I got the senior senior discount. So anyway, I got it. So there I'm going. And not only did he say six hundred dollars, he helped me put together the journey 
Here's where you need to go. Here's what uh, I'll set you up a meal plan. It'll be $150 for 10 days and you'll have breakfast and dinner at this chalet where you're going to be staying with other people, people all over the world. It was even way beyond my own dreams. And then the train came right by the chalet there. So all I had to do was eat my breakfast, get ready and catch the train. But the interesting thing is nobody spoke English that I knew of. And so I was just in the atrium of the building and I heard two people speaking and I said, oh, you speak English. Yes, we're from New York and we also speak French. So they helped me get around in Italy. But you know, before I got there, it was interesting. I got on the wrong bus. The person at the airport put me on the wrong bus. I may have asked for the wrong place. I don't know. But while I was on there, I met, a, this just tells you that things happen to help you accomplish your goals if you believe and go after them. So anyway, I was on this bus to go to the chalet from the airport. And there was a younger man and an older man talking. The younger man was speaking English. And I, I turned around and I said, oh, my gosh, you speak English. And I said, I got something to tell you. You are drop dead gorgeous. And he was the coolest looking young man. And I said, but don't take it wrong. And he's so we talked a little bit and his father was, owned a business and he was the sales end of the sales and marketing. But he but he told his his dad, ask him, which I couldn't understand what he said, ask him, where is she going? And he told her. The next thing I know, the gentleman, the older gentleman got up and talked to the driver. Now, I didn't know anything. I just thought he was going up there to give him a tip or something. So anyway, we went on the route and everybody was off of the bus but me. And I said, oh, dear God, am I going to be kidnapped? <laughs> and I said to the driver, oh, my gosh, are you going to take me to my, my chalet? And he said, yes. He said, you're on the wrong bus. He said, but that man came up here and gave me the money and asked me, would you please take her to the right location? Do you see, if we just go after our dreams, you see how they happen? I had a ball that week. I had a ball. So you just never know how they're going to happen. But you got to, out of these exercises, these episodes we're doing, Come up with something you really would like to do and let somebody know. Ask somebody for help. These are mindsets that get in our way and keep us from living our lives fully. Some people say that we're just surviving in life, not thriving. But it is possible to thrive. And I will help you get started if you send me, if you email me and tell me, this is what I want to do. Who could I talk to or what? I don't have the answers, but you know, I've got a mouse. And so I can ask a lot of questions. And I call myself again, a dream builder. That's what I've helped people do all of their life. Now, I just want to share some stories from people who followed their dreams and let go of their mindsets. My mindset that I didn't have enough money did not get in the way because I said, I don't know how to do it, but I know you know God. So it doesn't matter who you go to. I just happen to go to God. I was talking, I was consulting to this company and this woman, it was a manufacturing company and they were being, they were closing. And so I was there as a coach. So I asked, she was one of the people in the group. And I said, so what do you want to do? She said, you know what? If I could truly do what I want to do, I'd like to create small decorative landscape 
flower gardens for people at their home. And I said, well, where could you start? Where could you go find maybe an opportunity? I don't know. I've been thinking about it. People come to me all the time now because they know I like to do that, but I haven't monetized it. So we brainstormed, where could she get the experience and meet clients? Where do you think she went? The garden shop at Lowe's. People came in there. They asked her questions. We put together a business card. And whenever Lowe's had these, when their plants would start to get dry or anything, sometimes they throw them away or sometimes they mark them down and we can, they, she asked them, could I have them? She was an employee. Could I have them? So they gave her, that's what she used. She nurtured them back to life and she got to start her business and she quit Lowe's and started her business. But Lowe's loved her because she came in there with customers. Uh, another story, a young engineer that I worked with when I was in corporate America, he was from Purdue University and Sang Bui was, he, he, he liked the human resources. He liked the social aspect of corporate America, but his mom and dad wanted him to be able to survive. And so they thought engineering was it. So Sang said, Miss Leonard, I'm just not happy doing this. And I said, Sang, I got an idea. Go back to Purdue and get your final year in whatever discipline of engineering you want. Then you come back here and I'll put you in the engineering department, whether it be industrial engineering or mechanical, we'll put you in that department. I want you to get some experience here. And then how about moving you into human resources where you do the hiring and the coaching and going to universities? That's what we did. That's what Sang wanted and he knew it and I could help him. He did have to do some things he didn't want to do, but he knew he was on his way to the mission that he dreamed of. And that was being in human resources or training or something that was more on the socio side of the business. Filmmaker, another one, was also a composer. And I just told you about this one. And she ended up creating a comedy act. We did it together. <laughs> Bingo wings, you know. <laughs> So then here's another one. This story is about me. I already told you a little bit about it. I dreamed of writing a song and I created high heels, shoes, and I've written several lyrics. I, I found out that's not a song. <laughs> that's simply a lyricist. So I'm learning all the language for it. But I've written 15 others. And yeah, now hold me to it, too. I've already talked to the individual or who helped me produce high heels, sh high heel shoes. And I said, I've got about 15 or 20 songs, not the melody or anything, or not the key. <laughs> and he said, I said, but I want to create a DVD or a CD of all of these songs. And I want to sing them myself. I remember the first time I went over and he helped me create the melody to this. He and the guitar player said, what key do you sing in? And I said, I have no idea. I don't sing. <laughs> but go go listen to it on, uh, on oh, well, whatever it is, <laughs> YouTube, and you'll have a good time. It's funny. And this young man, I told you, that is my nephew. He went on, I said I would tell you later. He went on YouTube, taught himself to play the guitar, taught himself to uh, market himself, and he's in college now and performing all over. My guess is that he's going to be a well-known singer someday, maybe even more. I don't know. But he just got out there, and they didn't have the money to pay out all this for song lessons or for 
uh, guitar lessons or all this. It's available to you. Yeah. And one other thing here, the book that inspired this Hello Self podcast that we're talking to right now, I I thought you can just write another book, Patricia, because I had written several, but you could just write another book, chapter one, chapter two. But I thought, how do I step outside the boundaries of another book? And here's what I did. Hello Self is written as a screenplay. Frame one, and part of it you're getting in the, these exercises we're doing. Uh, frame one is beginning to, who am I? So it's starting to know who you are. F- frame two, frame three, frame four, nine frames. But this idea of Hello Self and screenplay fit with my interest in the arts. I love the arts because I think Shakespeare, my favorite, taught about life through the arts. Plays. And so the idea of this was at the end, when they have finished finding out who they are in this Hello Self book, I I give the reader and Oscar. Now, it's not a real plastic Oscar or a real metal, but it is a picture of the Oscar at the end and the celebration. So you see, the whole thing is, not only am I putting this out, I did this in corporate America. I had a group of directors and higher vice presidents And they came to a workshop that I was doing, and I called it Mask. Now, I was surprised that they came because 90% of them were men at that level at that time when I was in corporate America. But anyway, I put on a table at the side of the room, I said, this is to unmask who we are when we come to work and who we are at home in our everyday life. Who am I and who am I when I come to work each day? So I said over there on that table is some paper plates and some ribbon and markers and jewels. I want you to go over there. These are directors and vice presidents. This is a true story. I want you to go over there and create a mask of who you are when you're in your home or with your family or out living your life, and then who you are, another mask, when you come to work. I'm not going to tell you all their stories, but they got up and did it, much to my surprise. But anyway, I remember this one person. He was director of engineering. He put on, and I had them tie them on when they told their story, He tied on the mask of his family and when he went fishing and, you know, those kind of things when he was just out living his life. And then I said, so do you what you show us your mask? Will you? He didn't. Nobody had to. But he said, yes, I will. And he tied on the mask of who he was when he came to work. He told a sad story. And when he pulled the mask off, there was a tear in his eye. This engineer had graduated from Purdue, was director of the engineering organization at this company. And we asked him, why? Why are you sad and got that sad face when you come to work? He said, Patricia, I did not go to Purdue to become uh, an engineering management professional. I said, well, what did you want to do? He said, I had dreams of being an engineer. So after that workshop was over, I walked with him back to uh, the corporate office. And I said, so you tell me that you would like to have a structure that 
gives people the same kind of incentive, money, acknowledgement that the leadership or the uh, management side gives. And he said, yes, and we don't have that structure for the engineer. It's almost like if you want to rise up in the organization, you have to do go into management. And he said, that's not what I wanted. So guess what we did? We sat down together and put a uh, engineering growth, career management, career succession path together, and he was happy as could be. You see, things are possible if we quit fooling ourselves. He was coming to work every day and nobody knew he was unhappy. And I said, well, what do you want? He's a very, he was a very smart guy. Tell me what you want and tell me what we can do to make this organization better. You see, the whole thing about un taking off your mask and being real, authentic, I always say the best gift we can give ourselves is authenticity. The best gift we can give the world is our authenticity. So anyway, you know, what happens is we get put in boxes if we want to live in the society. Well, if you want to work at this corporation, these are the paths and this is what. So we weaken people or dampen people's spirit and creativity. We do it to ourselves, too. If you don't speak up, you're doing it to yourself. I've been in so many corporate downsizings and people had had no idea that they could get more than what they had been doing. Because the company had said, no, this is where you are. I mean, they don't say it like that, but they don't give you the opportunity and you're afraid to ask because you're afraid you'll lose what you've got. These episodes that we're doing is that we have to start express, expressing our soul because that is what's wrong with our society right now. That's why people are angry with each other. That's why there's jealousy. There's a burning. Because they want to do something with their lives, but they don't know how. So that's what my next episode is about, is creating the opportunities for you to write a book or to talk to somebody about writing a book or to come to one of my cabaret shows and do some kind of performing. It might be writing a song that you always wanted to do. Right? Be might be writing a poet poetry book. I can't believe how many people I've encouraged. Why don't you put that down in a book? My sister said to me, I'd really like to write a book one time. And she said, was going to sit down and do it. And she said, now, I don't know where to begin chapter one. I said, no, 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 no. You don't have to begin with chapter one. Just sit down and write to yourself. What's your book about? What are some themes that you want to bring out in your book? I get so excited about this kind of work because it is your life. I want you to have the quality of life that you want and dream of, and you can have it. You don't have to let somebody tell you, even though you may think that, tell you what you can do and what you can't do. There's somebody who will support you. This seminar is not an answer. I realize that. It's only my excitement about the potential of an answer. Without exploring, though, and reaching out to what our soul is screaming for. If people love themselves, they would know how to love the world, too. And we wouldn't have all this disruption. And I say this disruption is good because it causes us to say, I'm not going to live like this anymore. I'm going to create something. So we will start, and I'm saying 24 is going to be a year of major transition, not only for our world, our culture, 
and you, our people. Live our life without regret is what you want to do in your life. And that's what this is about, is get out there. If you've ever committed to yourself, do it now. I don't care how old you are. I'm not telling you how old I am. They threw the numbers away. <laughs> but anyway, just go do it. And there'll be somebody out there that can help you. Too often, we go to workshops like this. We learn and we say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then guess what? Like our dreams and goals, we throw that learning up on that someday shelf. No. If you stick with me, I'm going to make episode four of this series. I'm going to make you a deal you can't refuse. Well, I guess you could because you've got free will. <laughs> but I'll give you a rough time about it. <laughs> so I want you to get clear about why you even joined this podcast in the first place. And why maybe somebody suggested it to you because suggest it to somebody else. If you decide to go forward with me and do something with what you're doing, send me an email. And if you want a copy of the questions for these three episodes, I'll send the questions to you because you may say, oh, I can't remember the questions or, oh, I got caught up and I had to do something. Yeah, we always got something to do instead of paying attention to our life, right? And if you want coaching, just send me a note, patricia at patricialeonard.net, an email, and we'll talk about what it is you want. And I just want to say in closing today, thank you for all the hard work you've done so far because you love yourself, because you want more out of life, because you want to help those around you. We have polished and groomed our mindsets since childhood to be conditioned to the environment and teachings and confused by all the social norms, confused by our life experiences, abused by those we trusted and on and on. Now, there is no excuse you can get what you want. You can get what you want and just identify it and go do it. And don't call me or don't text me or don't email me if you're not ready to do it because I will haunt you if I have your email. <laughs> anyway, this is Patricia Leonard. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. And I'm suggesting that you tune in for the next one. So again, thank you very much for committing to yourself one more time that you're willing to go after the dreams and goals of your life and get them off that someday shelf. And don't give me this thing about age. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much again for being here at Hello Self Podcast again. I am Patricia Leonard, and I'm helping you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And I always say at the end, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.